All right, welcome to CTIA. My name is Nathan Benton, not Philip Sorrells. Uh, today we're going to be talking about wireless as the next utility. And what does that mean really? Well, when you walk into a commercial office space, what are your expectations? The expectations that you have power, electricity, that you have water, right? And I think the expectation now is becoming that you expect connectivity. And whether that connectivity is going to be wireless mobile cellular connectivity or Wi-Fi connectivity, um, the expectation is that they'll both be there. Also, I think most of us would, would really expect that when we walk into a building, we go off of our mobile plan and onto the Wi-Fi so we can stop chewing up our data plan, right? So it's almost becoming as if Wi-Fi, whether DAS or, or, uh, or wireless, whether Wi-Fi or DAS, is the next utility. So just a few stats on here, building sizes, things like that, but I think the most important one is right here. When you look at the existing coverage of DAS, wireless, only 2% of this 30 billion square meters of office space is covered by distributed antenna systems, which bring in that cellular signal and distribute it throughout the building, while we're looking at 95% Wi-Fi coverage. The two do relate, as I said, because we're typically looking to get off of our cellular plan and onto that Wi-Fi network. Um, so we've got pretty good coverage here on the Wi-Fi, but we'll talk about later capacity and on that Wi-Fi systems, what other systems are running on it, production networks and uh, guest networks, as well as the uh, mobile data. So if you think about it, we really should be looking at wireless as the next utility. So when we build a building, not only should we be designing it for power and water, we should also be designing the building to support connectivity and wireless connectivity in specific. That leads us to Comscope's perspective. Comscope's perspective is we can provide wireless into a building, both DAS and Wi-Fi for you, the infrastructure to support both that is so important into our commercial buildings. What does the user expect? Well, do I expect that in order to get coverage in this building, I have to have AT&T? And if I walk in with a Verizon phone, I'm not gonna be able to get coverage? No, I think the user is expecting that no matter what carrier I use, and no matter what technology, whether it's LTE, CDMA, UMTS, that I'm going to be able to get coverage in that building. Not only that, but I'm also gonna expect as a user that I also get Wi-Fi in that building as well. So. We refer to that as a ubiquitous experience, and no matter what is in that building, no matter what you have, when you come in, it's gonna be supported. A number of years back, we got into this trend of BYOD. So corporations are basically saying, you bring in your own phone, we're gonna stop paying for it, right? Bring in your own phone, and we'll hook it to the, the uh, corporate network. And with that said, I, as a corporation, have to support all of the different carriers because I can no longer dictate that you use one carrier over another. So that was a, a trend that started this whole wireless as a net utility. Um, so the system that would be in that building would have to be able to support in a single system, it'd be a neutral host we call it, would have to support your uh, all the different carriers so that no matter who walks in the building, no matter what plan they're on, they're going to be able to get coverage in that building. Also, one of the things that we don't necessarily think about right away is public safety. So those two-way public safety radios. So if a first responder goes into a building, now there's new codes coming out that say, okay, if you build a new building, you have to provide for two-way radios within that building for first responders for public safety. That can also be added to a distributed antenna system as well. So you can do all the support for all the carriers as well as support for public safety all on a single system. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you want, uh, integrate Wi-Fi with that system. Wi-Fi systems, DAS systems, a lot of challenges to installing these systems. Some are very complex uh, systems to design and install, right? When we design and install them, it's not only that we're worried about the coverage, so getting my three to five bars on my phone when I walk in, we expect that we're going to get that, but also the capacity. Now, how many people have been to a sports venue, baseball game, where everybody's taking pictures, uploading to Instagram and Facebook? You got three bars, but you can't connect to anything, right? That's because there's too many users trying to access that system at the same time. So it's not a coverage issue, it's a capacity issue. So when you design a, a 
uh, indoor cellular wireless DAS, you have to take into account both the coverage and the capacity. So from a traditional system, we're looking at RF engineers being necessary to design those systems, right? So it's very complex systems. They have to do predictive studies to understand where you're going to put your antennas. Those studies are then certified by the carriers. So very complex design, installation of the systems, very specialized equipment, uh, coax cables that are, are difficult to deal with and terminate, right? So that's, uh, from an installation standpoint, that uh, definitely causes issues. And then you have to have specialized installers that know how to run the cabling, to terminate the cabling, to install all the hardware, connect everything up, commission it, so that they can then present it to the carriers, uh, so the carriers will certify it and provide service. So very complex, but it doesn't have to be that way. And not to mention that, is these systems traditionally only support cellular and not Wi-Fi. Right? So you're halfway there, but like I said at the beginning, when you walk into a building, you expect to get off the cellular network and onto the Wi-Fi network to stop chewing up your data plan. Not to mention, if you do not install this up front, right, at the same time that you would be installing the electrical power for the lights and the pipes for all the plumbing, if you don't look at wireless as a utility and install all of that up front as well, then you're going back in, it's a, a major nightmare to get all that cabling and, and infrastructure installed. So very simple, very simple grid pattern when it comes to installing this. Um, you don't have to necessarily do the predictive studies up front, although you do have to do them to get them certified, but there's, uh, from a, a Comsco perspective in installing these systems, there's standards that dictate uh, cell coverage and coverage areas. So as you install access points within the ceiling, there's a grid pattern. So you can lay it all, all the, the cable up uh, while you're installing the other, the other solutions. Um, also, one of the things that we look at is this DAS system, as it starts to look like Wi-Fi, can it ride on the same IT infrastructure as all the other systems? So 10 years ago, when we were installing cabling into a building for data systems, we would only install phones, computers, right? That's all, maybe some printers here and there, but that was primarily what you see in a building. Well, what do you see in a building today, right? Wi-Fi access points, IP cameras, right? Security cameras, Wi-Fi access points. Um, you're looking at LED lighting, right? Which runs over regular traditional IT. HD TVs, right? HD TVs now can be powered over your data network and get a four, uh, the 4K signal, right? HD base C is what we call it. So we're getting away from just that telephone and desk infrastructure. And every, if you look at it, all these things are moving above the ceiling. And especially if you install Wi-Fi access points, do you really need to install cabling for your phone and your computer at the desk, right? Is the Wi-Fi system robust enough to handle production traffic? right, for everybody in the building. Have we gotten to the point where the speeds are fast enough with Wi-Fi, the connection reliability is, is good enough for Wi-Fi, where we can take our production network off of cabling and put it onto our Wi-Fi access points? Maybe, maybe not. Some will argue, some is a religion, right, we'll always do cable to the desktop. Others will say, why not try this? And, and what we're finding out right now is that workplace of the future studies that are being done, a lot of people are looking at going Wi-Fi for everything. What that means is that all the systems now reside above the ceiling. And if you have a single cabling infrastructure common to all these different systems, right, it makes it very easy to install, maintain, and upgrade uh, any one of these different systems, whether it be IP security, you know, um, or access points and things like that. So, what I'm gonna talk about is a universal connectivity grid. And this universal connectivity grid says, hey, if I take a common infrastructure, okay, if we look at the cabling for our access points, the cabling for our IP security cameras, for our access control systems, um, for our HD based TVs, right, all those use twisted pair data cable. So if I can figure out a way to put my DAS on that twisted pair data cable system at the same time, that I can install, pre-install, cabling out to different locations on the floor, and whenever I need to add a device, it's a patch cord, 
that plugs into the device wherever I put it in the ceiling, and no matter what that device is. So that, that, that cabling system, that infrastructure is now universal to support all the different systems that are going to be in my IT network, right? Now including DAS, right? And we have a, a booth over here that talks about the Comscope Ion E product, and the Ion E product is a DAS that's basically moving away from typical single mode fiber and half inch coax cable out to passive antennas. It's getting on the, the traditional IT multi-mode fiber and then category 6A twisted pair copper out to the uh, universal access point that sits up in the ceiling, similar to a Wi-Fi access point. So like I said, it runs over category 6A cable. This is, this is different. This is not typically what we see on DAS. We typically see that big coax cable, right? So category 6A cable can handle the full frequency spectrum from 320 megahertz all the way up to 2700 megahertz for all carriers, all technologies, including public safety, right? So the bandwidth of this cable will be able to support all those, the frequency spectrum as well as gigabit ethernet. So you can actually run all of your cellular signals over that cable and gigabit ethernet over at that cable at the same time. And why is that important? It's important because if I can run this out to an access point that sits out in the ceiling for DAS, and I want to have Wi-Fi coverage, I just take a short patch cord and plug my Wi-Fi access point into my DAS universal access point, and I now have DAS and Wi-Fi coverage at the same time running over the same infrastructure, right? By the way, if I want to swap that out for an IP camera in the future, it's running over the same cable, the same data network as IP cameras. So you, it really makes all the devices, the infrastructure is kind of agnostic. It doesn't matter what you're going to put on it, the infrastructure will support it if you use a Category 6A cable. So you can see now we're getting to that point where this infrastructure becomes as important as electrical and water infrastructure because there's so many systems that are riding on it, so many things that you can do with this. By putting it up front, when you put it in the electrical and the, and the water, you put this infrastructure in at the same time, and now you're all set for all your uh, data and cellular mobile needs. So I talked about the IONE. That is what's making this possible for DAS, right? IONE, ION, you can maybe look at it as E stands for enterprise. It's a perfect fit for the enterprise space, right? The typical office space that you would go into. And some of the benefits, uh, be, by being able to use our universal cabling infrastructure, this now starts to look a lot like a Wi-Fi network, right? Where you have your main uh, switch down at the bottom here, right? That's our, our main head end, our, our central access node. That's where all your cellular signals come in. But then it rides up through the riser on multi-mode fiber, the same way that you would plug a network switch in, a Cisco switch or so. You would also plug in a transport extension node for your DAS, and it would sit in the same 19-inch rack that all your switch equipment is, is in. And it uses that same Category 6A cable that you would use for your Ethernet network. It uses that same cable that goes out to this universal access point. So if you were just designing a Wi-Fi network, you use tools like Air Magnet or Ekahau. Those are our uh, predictive study tools, RF tools. For this, it's called IBWAVE for DAS, the same thing. So you'd run a predictive study for Wi-Fi with Ekahau, with IBWAVE for DAS, and it would tell you exactly where you would place each of your universal access points, as well as your Wi-Fi access points. And by the way, because I have a gigabit ethernet port on this universal access point on the IONE, I can now just plug my, wi my Wi-Fi access point right into that one. So now it's a single cable that's able to support DAS and Wi-Fi rather than having two completely different infrastructures with their traditional DAS. Right, it starts to make a lot of sense. I think one of the things that makes sense is this looks familiar to your IT managers, right? Your IT managers see those passive antennas, they see that coax cable and they're like, whoa, wait a minute, we don't use that. That's not our stuff, right? I don't know that I even want to deal with that because it, it's just nothing that I work with. Now, when you walk in and you say, okay, you can use that twisted pair cable you're used to using, that category cable, category 6A, and use that same exact cable that you're used to, use that same multi-mode fiber that you're used to using in your riser, now it makes sense to them. And by the way, if the, the design and the architecture is very similar to that Wi-Fi network, it's not a stretch for them to say, well, Ekaha Wi-Fi tool, 
it works the same as IV Wave. I, I'm familiar with that, so this is easy for me to use. Installing regular IT cabling, this looks easy. This is something that I can do myself. There's a few other things that we do to make it even easier for them, right? So as I said, 380 megahertz all the way up to 270 megahertz, right? So this supports the full spectrum of all the carriers and all the technologies out there, as well as public safety. So these are just some of the, the companies and uh, technologies that it's supporting, right? And then again, over our standard IT infrastructure. It starts to look familiar for these guys and they're not scared of it and they say, okay, we can do this, all right? So, just to wrap up. Common infrastructure, right? That's what we're looking at. We're looking at a common IT infrastructure that now can be used for all of our IT systems within our, our space, including DAS, right? And I think, I, I think, this is just my feeling, because I know when I walk into a building, I, I do want to get off that cellular network, I do want to get onto that Wi-Fi network. I think that you can make a strong case to say this connectivity, physical connectivity for your wireless and your DAS should be viewed as a utility the same way that you would look at other facilities in the building. Do you have any questions? All right, very good. Thank you for letting me talk. Thanks for uh, participating.